I want to begin by uh, giving a definition of the of the gospel, and uh, perhaps by uh, by way of explanation, uh, a definition by way of explanation. But we, uh, if we could describe, or by description, if we could say that uh, that we were all in a state of ruination. Matter of fact, in Adam we are. We are we're in a state of of ruination and loss. I mean, that's uh, that's just the way. That's really the way that all men are. And the gospel is this. Uh, you know, there, it, it's the gospel is an elixir. You know, the the word elixir. I'm not going to go into the. You know, to, I'm just going to tell you that the word elixir really. Uh, there's the only the only valid elixir that there is is the gospel. The gospel uh, there there are no other elixirs. Men have come you know, come uh, saying that they have a you know elixir. I've got a solution for all of your woes, right? Got a solution for all of your troubles, and and uh, but the gospel, see, is that kind of is that is that very thing? It's a it's that elixir, see. And it's a uh, it's something that that actually every man and woman that was ever born uh, desperately needs. They they stand in, in need of this. Where see uh, and the uh, what what what's what has occurred uh, is that the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. See that's uh, some some men just don't see it. See, some men see it, and some men don't. But see, to those who see it, this gospel, see, is the is it's the treasure that's hid in the field. As one of the brethren ministered earlier, see, it's the you just sell everything uh, that you have so you can go buy the field. You can't buy the treasure, but you can buy the field where the treasure is. You know, so and so you so you can do some some digging. Now the the gospel defines us. You know the uh, it defines us in that we are. Uh, it, it it defines who we are. See, you know uh, the, the this matter of the the sin issue. See, uh, the the sin issue is uh, is is the issue is really the issue that the the whole the issue is really sin and salvation. See, that's really what men have got to come to grips with is the matter of sin and salvation, and the gospel is the is the is the message that has this that that comes to grips with this issue. See, and it's the only it is the only resolution to this 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 issue that uh, confronts every sing every last one of the sons of Adam. See, every last one. See. All right, now my text is uh, is Second Timothy uh, one eight, and uh, my topic is the afflictions of the gospel. And uh, the, let me just read the text here: Be that be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. So this is, uh, this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Now to uh, aff afflictions are, uh, <clears throat> consist of like, uh, can, well the word to afflict can mean, uh, you know what can mean like to torment, it can mean to, uh, to strike. That's actually the, the most basic meaning is to strike. Like when something strikes at your conscience, strikes at your heart, strikes at your your body, strikes at your inward man, you know you see that's that's affliction. See so, so uh, so anyhow, let's let's just think about some of these uh, these words, and uh, we'll get into my get into my message. Now the afflictions of the gospel and the afflictions of Christ are the result. Of a fierce concept, uh, conflict between kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world and the kingdoms 
of our Lord and of his Christ. See, now we're, now see in the gospel, see we're, we're right in the middle of this and we're, we're actually involved now in the warfare, see. So in the gospel, the gospel actually brings us into the conflict of these kingdoms, see. So the, the conflict, it's the warfare of faith, see. The, the gospel brings us into the conflict, see. It's, the, it's called the gospel of the kingdom, right? So the, this gospel, Brother Given's text uh, at the end of, the, of this meeting is going to be this gospel of the kingdom, right? Must be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Well, let's think about this. Now, <clears throat> afflictions are the plight of all men, although men were not originally created for affliction. Think about this. Did God create men to be afflicted? You just think about it. Now, you, uh, when, you're, when you're in affliction, this is actually an unnatural condition. You sense that this is not something that I want to be in. This is not something, this is very, this is, it's unpleasant, right? To say the least sometimes. That's, uh, so, but, but anyhow, but God did not make us to be afflicted. Now, he made, he made, uh, he made men that were created that, that could with endure afflictions, but, but nevertheless, uh, that isn't the end. That's not the end for which he made us. He didn't make us for affliction. That's not, he made us, he actually said, he, his, the purpose for which he made us, actually, he stated in the, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, remember he said, uh, the, the, he talked about, the, let, us, let us make man in our image, in our, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Remember that? So he made us to have dominion. See, so, so this is what uh, we, were at, we were originally created for, created for dominion. These bodies were created for dominion, even in, this, even in the lesser sense, to have rule over the, the animals and but nevertheless, we were created for dominion, not for affliction. But, see now, the entrance of sin into the world has, uh, has, has uh, brought about a change. Although uh, affliction cometh not forth from the dust, neither doth trouble uh, spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. And uh, trouble, uh, trouble is the mother of all afflictions. See, that's uh, afflictions are patently or unmistakably associated with the entrance of sin into the world, and predominantly with Adam's transgression, but unmistakably with personal sin. See, so affliction. See now, affliction is is brought into is involved in all of those factors, see? So it's, it's a complex, we're talking about a complex matter. This is, uh, it's, not as, uh, it's not as simple as it may appear at, you know, on the, on the surface. It says, and the, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So man has both uh, a seen and an unseen part, and both of them are subject to affliction. See, that, that complicates things. You've got a seen part that's subject to affliction. You've got an unseen part that's subject to affliction. See that? And, and that's, uh, and see now we're, now think about, now just think about this, this, in this unseen part, you're able to, you're able to actually travel back in time. You're actually able to re relive the events that are in the past. And you're able to look in prospect to the future, but but see now affliction can even enter in here and in effect in effect here. See so for those uh, for those who are in Christ, afflictions have become more complex because the conflict between the old man and the new man, the kingdom of God has now moved in. In the new covenant. Many new things have been brought to light. Now distinction is made between the, the spirit, the soul, and the body, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And now the word of God divides asunder between the soul and the spirit. Now here, just think about how that affliction is involved here. Now you're, when you're, sometimes when you're having inward affliction, Sometimes the way out of this is just 
hearing some word of God. Some, some word of God is, is entering in here and dividing asunder. See, you're, see you're, you're the soulish part of you like uh, clamps around the, the, your spirit and, and, obscures, and obscures it to you, actually. Obscures the, the, uh, the, uh, the liveliness of it to you, see. And the, and the word of God enters in here and divides asunder, see. And to the, uh, pierces even to the d dividing asunder of the, the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, and those who are in Christ uh, have a more elevated view of afflictions. If you think about this, now prior to the sufferings of Christ, the scripture would say things on this wise. The afflicted people thou shalt save. And he hath not despised the afflictions of the afflicted. And surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. See, so that, that was like back in the Old Covenant. See, that was uh, uh, back in those times when, uh, when we, you, you were just like, we were just like involved, but we weren't very, we, we can't, couldn't be, do much about it. We just, uh, there was just, ha if you were, you see what I mean? It was just, uh, they were happening. These afflictions were happening, but there wasn't really much that you could do in, in response to it, you know, the, except cry out unto the Lord. You So, uh, now such uh, aff affirmations as these uh, that I've just read uh, still stand in comfort as they always have. They comfort by giving perspective. And I thought herein is a, a marvelous thing and a tribute to some of the excellencies of God our maker and redeemer. You know, that he's, uh, that he's, he's made us uh, in this way that... Uh, you know, th the fact that you can be, see, if you can be, if you can know in your affliction, if you can know that God is favorable, and you can, you can know that he favors you. You can know that right in your affliction, see. If, if, you, can, if you can see that and get a hold of it, see, well, you can rejoice in your affliction, see. You can rejoice in it, and perhaps maybe, uh, maybe it won't be long, and it'll, be go you'll, it'll go away. Maybe, it'll be, uh, maybe that'll be the end of it, but maybe it won't, too. So this is, uh, but see, we, in Christ, see, we have, uh, we've been elevated to this place where we're able to, re to, re to joy in God and to rejoice in affliction. See, this is, uh, this is a marvelous thing, to be able to rejoice in, in, even in times of affliction. Now here, uh, of course, these are uh, texts that we're familiar with, but he said, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Remember that? And he said now, uh, he said in, in uh, but we have this treasure in an earthen vessels and that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Cast down, not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Now this is a, a marvelous thing too, to be able to identify with this, this experience. You know, that the always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a, that is an experience that you can know. That is a, that's something that you can identify with. See, now that sweetens the cup. See, now what, the waters that you're called upon to pass through, if you can see that this is what it's, that's really what's transpiring, well, you can endure just about anything, see, that, uh, that God sends your way. So I want, to think, want us to think for a moment about Ephraim and Manasseh and the significance of their names. You remember the, uh, this is found in Genesis chapter 41, uh, 50 through 52. For Joseph, what had occurred to him at the hands of his brothers in Potiphar's house, 
despite the sheer grievousness that was involved there, had to have meaning and significance attached to what had transpired in his heart and mind. See, he was, see, he was not like a, a dumb dog, or he was not like a brute beast. See, he had, there had to be significance. Why is this happening? See, now he wasn't questioning God. He wasn't questioning in an unbelieving way. See, but there had to be significance and meaning attached to this experience. See, so, and, and there was. See, now God, and God, and he saw it. He saw the, see, now this is, and this is something that, uh, that you'll be able to identify with as well. See, you've got to, in your uh, time of trouble, you've got to be able to assign some meaning to it, some significance. Now, what is happening here? What's happening, and what is what is God doing? See, and and uh, what what is the end towards the, which this is working? See, so that's now that you're, the the uh, you know the name Manasseh, of course. Uh, God has made me forget all of my toil. Well, that's a good thing to know. I, I I can testify of that that God can. I've been I've had some I've had a lot of toil. I've had a lot of toil that I thought I'd never forget. Ever had that kind of toil? I've been in that kind of toil. I thought I'd never forget it. I, I just thought there was no way out of this. See, but I'll just, I can testify to you, brethren, that God has made me forget all of my toil. See? And also, you remember, and, and the word uh, Manasseh means uh, God, God he'll, he will make me fruitful in the land of my affliction. He's made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. See, now, now that almost seems like an impossible thing, right? You, you, to, to be fruitful in the land of your affliction? Is that possible, that you could be fruitful in the land of your affliction? It seems like that would be the time when there would be the least amount of fruit, right? And, and it seems that way. You know, it seems like there's, there's, no, there's no fruit coming forth, right, in, the land, in this time of affliction, but, but God is able to make you fruitful in the land of your affliction, see? So, so you just take hold of these words. See, now this... Afflictions cry out for an interpretation and clarification of their significance. Why is that which has come upon me happening? Men are created in the image of God and are not as the beasts of the field. See, so this is, uh, this is the reason why you, we, we have to have, there's got to be, when you pass through trouble, see, you've got to have, you've got to, you've got, you have to have understanding about why is this happening? See, otherwise you can't have any peace. If you, if you can't see any, if you can't see any, association of, of, of why this is happening or what's happening then you can't then you can't uh, you can't really uh, you can't really have any peace in the trouble now brute beasts were made to be taken and destroyed but men were not see this is uh, they were made in the image and crea- after the creation the, after the likeness of God now think about this in job, did I skip to? I might have skipped a page. No, I didn't. I want us to think about uh, two men. Now, I want to compare two men and, and their Job and Christ. And uh, I, I've done a lot of thinking about this in the last couple of years. About, uh, you know, when we, we, of course, we think of Job, you know, have you've heard of the patience of Job, and the, we think of Job as the, as the, one of the premier sufferers in the Bible, right? You, you, you associate him with suffering, right? With, that's what, when you think of the word Job, right? When you think of this, the name Job. And uh, I can remember early on in, in my uh, walk in the faith how that uh, when I would be passing through trouble, I'd, I'd spend a lot of time in Job. I wanted to have, a, I wanted to have some understanding. I want to have some understanding about what was, what was happening. I want to be able to, I wanted something that God, I wanted to know something that God said to, to interpret. I, want, I wanted an interpretation from God. I wanted, I wanted a, that kind of an interpretation about what was happening uh, to me. See, and now both uh, Job and, and the Lord Jesus Christ are looked up to by men as examples with regard to suffering. But when men look more closely, a distinct difference is, becomes readily apparent. With regard to, to Job, uh, there is a distinct element of mystery associated with suffering. 
Now, when you think about this, I remember that uh, I was satisfied as when I was back in those days, uh, just reading Job, that if I just, uh, I, you know, like if, if, the, if the mystery could be undone just a little bit, if I could just see some purpose added to the mystery, see, but it was, it was still like at a distance, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't realize it back then, but, but, I, but I was comforted. I, I, I was genuinely comforted by words that were spoken by Job and, and, uh, and his three friends, and, and, I, and I thank the Lord uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the provision that was made here. In Job, look, men look for an interpretation and clarification of the mystery of suffering regarding their own circumstance. Now, here's this is what I want you to see. See, now here's in Job, what's most important is your own circumstance. See, that's uh, if it, if if everything's all right with if every, if you if you sense that everything's all right with you, in Job, see, well then then, then everything's all right, right? Isn't that the conclusion you come to in Job? So if you see what I mean, if you if you can see that, uh, well, if this is this is the way God works and everything's all right, but see now that's now see there's a, there, there's a higher perspective than that. See that's what I want you to to see here. At best, however, Job and his three friends can only clarify in part. They they comfort by bearing witness to ways that God often works, which coincide with troubles that men are passing through. In the case of Job, the question of why is continually brought to the forefront and shown to be absolutely essential and something which reasonable men may re readily identify. In Job, uh, there can be a degree of relief and comfort, even in times of the greatest trouble and, and distress, if purpose can be perceived. With Job, the matter of suffering and affliction centers around individual men who are suffering unusual affliction of one sort or another, and the focus is on a happy issue out of the suffering as it pertains to them. Now, Job's three friends, though they were totally wrong in their assessment of Job's affliction were, and severely rebuked by the Lord for their misassessment of Job's condition, nevertheless served the purpose of bringing to light plausible causes of Job's affliction for the sake of future generations. See, this is... Uh, I, I, you know, when you think about Eliphaz and, and, uh, you know, uh, the other, the other names, uh, Naaman and, and these other ones who, uh, his three friends, you know, when you think of the things that they said, you know, it's a marvelous thing that they, that these men, they came together, they talked about God. You know, that's, uh, that's kind of a, a rare, that's a rare thing in our day. You know, the, when people come together, they talk about God. And here, here we find at least they were talking about God, right? But, uh, but they were making the wrong assessment of Job's, uh, Job's affliction. And, they were chas and uh, his three friends were uh, upbraided for that, to be, to be sure. In Job's suffering and affliction, the question raised by the shepherd boy David uh, go going forth to battle is continually made to come to the forefront, is there not a cause? Let's think about the afflictions of Christ now. The sufferings of, of Job are an, a rudimentary preparation for properly comprehending the sufferings of Christ. That's what I want you to see here, that this is a Now, for the sake of uh, clarification, in this uh, message, I want to make the distinction between the sufferings of Christ and the afflictions of Christ, because the afflictions of Christ are, the, are in my text. That expression is in my text, the afflictions of Christ, see, and, we're, and, uh, and you'll see uh, why, why I'm doing this. When we speak of the sufferings of Christ in my, in my message here, 
I'm not saying in every place where this word occurs. I'm just saying for the sake of clarity in my message, okay? I'm saying when we, talk, when we speak of the sufferings of Christ, we're talking about the, the things that only Jesus could do to put away sin and to satisfy the Father and, and bring us to God, right? So, and, and so now this, uh, these are things that we're not able to identify with. We're, we're not able to identify with that part of his suffering. See, that's just, uh, unless it be in, in a manner of worship. We, we, may, we can fall down and worship and bow down and, and we can, with our tears, we can, we can identify with our tears, but as far as enter, actually entering into it, see, now that's, uh, there's, no, there's no entering into that part of it. See, that's, uh, there's no entry, see, except, except worship. You, you, can, you, can, you can draw near and worship, worship the Lord in, in this matter, but not, uh, you can't enter in. Now, I make this uh, necessary distinction because uh, of the Colossians, Colossians 1, uh, 124 text, which speaks of the afflictions of Christ, which are lacking or behind. Now, when we talk about the sufferings of Christ, they're not lacking or behind. See, that's, uh, you see what I'm saying? So when we speak of the afflictions of Christ, now we're talking about some, another facet here. Now I'm going to just clarify what, what we're talking about here. What is lacking or behind are many, but not all, of the experiential aspects of Christ's sufferings for the sake of perfecting the saints and perhaps even vindicating God in his dealings with men. Judgment must begin at the house of God. But there is a, a large part of Christ's sufferings that men are not able to enter into, and such was involved in the putting away of sin, bringing in everlasting righteousness. So let's think about this. The afflictions of Job have now been marvelously overshadowed and eclipsed by the afflictions of Christ as to the, their significance and importance. Now, the, the relevance that this has to us is, see, now the mystery of suffering really has been removed. You see what I'm saying? See, there's, the, there's no mystery associated with suffering. We, our, our afflictions, there's no mystery. See, the, our, the affliction is, is, a, is due to sin. See, now this is clarified in the gospel. This is clarified by the, the sufferings of Christ. See, this, this is brought to light. Can you see what I'm saying? There's no, there's no mystery like there is in Job. See, it's not, it's not a mystery. Suffering is not a mystery. Like, I, I wonder why this is happening. See, it's not, see, now we, now we identify with Jesus' sufferings. See, in, 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 uh, in the gospel and in the new covenant, we identify with his sufferings. See, we're, we're, we actually rejoice in our sufferings. We rejoice in our affliction, the afflictions. If you can, if you can see the, uh, your, what you're passing through actually is, connected with Jesus, see, well, you can rejoice, and you can be sustained, see, really, you don't have to be, you know, you, you don't have to have an immediate deliverance from it, see, you can actually bear up under it, see, you can be, you can be strong and, and, uh, and glorify God in it. I want us to think about the, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch perceived a, a glimpse into the magnitude and involvements of the sufferer uh, declared by Isaiah as the eunuch was riding along in his chariot. Now, if you, if you think about it, in, in Isaiah 53 there, that's where he was reading, and uh, this, uh, he, was, uh, he was reading this place where uh, said that in his humility, his judgment was taken away. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. There in Acts chapter 8, remember that? Speaking of Christ. Now, now what, what, the, what the eunuch saw, he saw something that demanded a further clarification. See, I, I, don't, I don't think this was just a matter of, of interest or curiosity, see, or something that would just, uh, see, this was something, see God was, see, God was actually working with him. God was working with the eunuch before, before Philip came, God was actually readying 
readying the eunuch for Philip to preach to him. See, this was, uh, he was preparing the eunuch's heart. So you, the eunuch saw something. He saw something in this, uh, in this sufferer there in, in, in Acts chapter 8, you know, that was uh, from Isaiah 53. You know, he saw something that was, uh, that was uh, he, and when, when, when he had it uh, clarified, when this was clarified, that this was this man uh, speaking of himself, or was he talking about another? See, when that was clarified by Philip, see, then, well, he was, he was baptized and went on his way rejoicing. See, he was, uh, now think about, uh, you know, there's, a, there's like a personal a circumstance. You know, I, I think of uh, when, when I started out in the faith, I, I was more in, concerned about my own personal circumstance, just concerned about me, you know, I think. It was, uh, it was centered around me. But see, but, but there's, there's a great eternal circumstance, see, that we've been inducted into. We've been inducted into this greater circumstance, see. Something, see, now this is something that's, that pertains to all men. It pertains to all, it pertains to you just like it pertains to me. See, there's no, there is no difference, see, there's, in this matter. See, it's a, it's a, it's a great and eternal circumstance that involving what God has done in his son, see, the, in putting away sin and the, the afflictions of the Lord Jesus Christ are revelatory in nature as well as being efficacious under the fulfilling of the purpose for which they were endured. The afflictions of Christ, when duly and properly considered, are the blessed and glorious elixir of the sufferings of this present time. I'll just tell you, this is no matter what it is, the sufferings of this present time, no matter if it pertains to the body or the soul or this, you know, or whatever it is, or the or a combination of both. See, this is uh, see, it's the elixir. See, this is this gospel is the elixir. See, it's the it's the the good news. See, you perceive it to be such. This is uh, this is the this is the the great the the glorious provision that God has made. See, that's something that that. Uh, that only God can do. Christ's afflictions define, interpret, and give significance and worth to the sufferings of this present time. I want you to think about, uh, you know, that when it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, like his appearing, you know, his uh, said that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. He was manifested. And when he shall appear, see now this, this is, uh, see now, see now, this was said of no other prophet. See, there, there, no other, this was not said of Isaiah, that when he shall appear. See, that, see there was no significance. Or the, even John the Baptist, when, when he shall appear. See, there was, no, there, was no, there was no significance like this. See, this, when he shall appear. See, the, see he, in his own person. See, when he shall appear in his own person. See, the, the, the greatness of this one, when he shall appear. See, now here is, he's the, he is the, uh, he's, he is the elixir, and he is the, he, he is the, uh, he is the, he's the the good news and the and the and the and the essence of the gospel. Well, I, I want to uh, just make a few more uh, comments here. He talked about uh, Paul talked about enduring hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And I thought uh, the perspective of life as, and trouble as a succession of valleys and mountaintops is more akin to the old covenant than to the new. You know, because uh, because every mountain has been exalted 
and every mountain and hill has been made low. Isn't that what the, the scripture says? That's uh, So uh, to think about, well, I've been in the valley, and now I'm up on the mountaintop, and now I'm, I'm due to go down in the valley again. Well, that, that's, uh, I, I can remember when, uh, I can remember that when I used to have that kind of a perspective, but, but see now, uh, whether you're, uh, whether you're, uh, no matter what state you're in, see, whatever state I'm in, see, whether you're a, a abounding or whether you're a, a base, see, it's really, it's, uh, it's from that perspective now, see, we're, we're, we, we rejoice, we rejoice in Christ, we rejoice in what God has done, whether we're, whether we're, if we're lifted up, we rejoice, if we're, if we're, you know, a base, we rejoice, see, wherever we're at, we rejoice, see, and God is, this is uh, the, uh, in, in the new covenant, see, the, this is the uh, provision that God has made. He said, uh, Peter, think about this, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Well, I had I had some more things here, but I think I think that's uh, that kind of sums up what I was going to say, and uh, I'll uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna stop there, and I, I thank you for your attention.